Hi there, this is Tony from Pianotone.ca, and in this video, I'm going to be going over uh, one of my favorite uh, features on my new Yamaha PSR EW425, which is also a feature on the PSR E473, the mic input. Let's check it out. So when I heard that these new Yamahas had a mic input, I was excited and hopeful, uh, but I was ready to be not necessarily disappointed, but maybe a little bit underwhelmed. Because usually on entry-level uh, keyboards, uh, mic inputs are uh, very often kind of underpowered and more of a sales gimmick than something that's actually usable. But I'm very happy to say that that's not the case uh, with a mic input on these new Yamaha PSR keyboards. The mic inputs on the PSR E473 and the PSR EW425 have gain as well as an additional volume configuration within the menu. So they are adequately powered and actually totally usable. And now they've got optional chorus, reverb, and panning effects. And there's even a super convenient, uh, convenient uh, toggle button on the front of the keyboard that allows you to turn the effects on, the effects off, or just mute the mic uh, altogether. Okay, so the only equipment I'm using right now is my uh, PSR EW425, my dynamic microphone from Samson. I've got a uh, iPad uh, plugged into the audio input on my uh, PSR EW425 so that I can stream a backing track. And then the uh, keyboard is just connected directly to my iPhone using a USB cable. There's no uh, mixer, no external audio interface or anything else going on. So that's all that I'm using. So I can uh, make a talking video like I'm doing right now where I could turn the effects on, stream a backing track and play along and uh, make a kind of a performing video. I love your point of view When the world is cold You surround me Okay, so the first thing to uh, make note of is that you will need a dynamic microphone, not a condenser microphone to use this port. Uh, condenser mics require phantom power and this port won't be supplying that. That's okay because you're not likely to ever use a condenser mic in a performing situation anyways. They're more intended for studio recording and uh, anytime I tried to use a condenser mic for uh, vocals uh, at the same time as I was playing a keyboard uh, for a recording, the condenser was so sensitive that it would pick up the noise of me hitting the keys. The mic is a one quarter inch uh, mono input and uh, right next to it is the gain knob which you can think of as a preamp for your mic. At first I was kind of wondering why why did Yamaha put this on the back as opposed to you know, right up by the uh, mic button on the front of the keyboard but then as I thought about it it probably makes sense it would be next to the port physically to minimize whatever wiring is involved. I'm totally just guessing about that but I think I might be onto something. I have found, however, that once I found the right gain setting for my singing style and my microphone, that I never modify this anyways. If I need to make uh, more uh, on-the-fly modifications to my mic's volume, then I do that with the additional mic volume feature in the function menu, which I'm about to go over. Okay, so to get your mic set up for the first time, I would recommend the following steps. I'd recommend uh, you connect it with the keyboard turned off, Set the gain knob on the back to about 50%, uh, then turn the uh, main keyboard volume uh, down completely. And then if your mic has an on switch, turn it on, and then now turn on the keyboard, and then you can gradually turn up the uh, keyboard master volume until you can hear the mic. Now you can start configuring your gain and volume settings, and you will need to take some time playing with this to figure all of it out. You'll want to play and sing at the same time and talk into your mic, that type of thing. To access the mic settings in the function menu, you could just press uh, the function button and then start scrolling using the like the knob or the plus minus keys or something. But it's the there's a much faster way to get to it than that. And that would be if you hold down the shift button and then hit the uh, the mic button up in the top left here. It's actually going to take you uh, straight to the uh, mic settings in the function menu. Uh, it's actually going to take you into editing the mic volume. So n note here that you are actually editing the mic volume here. So if you start moving the dial, it's actually going to start changing the volume. If you wanted to get to the other mic settings, you could just hit uh, enter 
and then that way you're now at mic pan, mic reverb, mic chorus, etc. So if I hit enter again to go back and look at the uh, mic volume, uh, you can see the volume is noted as uh, I've got it set mine set to 110 right now, and you can set it from uh, anywhere from zero to 127. Now, in my opinion, you should try to get your gain knob set to a level where you don't have to max out the volume in the function menu to 127. That way you have some play in the volume in the menu to adjust volume up and down as needed. For example, if you left the gain at 50%, but you have to adjust this menu volume to 127 for it to be loud enough, then if you want to uh, make it louder at some stage, you're going to have to do that with the gain knob at the back, which is pretty inconvenient. So instead, if you turn the gain knob to you know, 50 75%, and uh, then uh, try to get away with a mic volume in the menu of like 100 to 120 or something. Now you've got some play to go up and down without having to use the knob in the back at all. All of these settings are going to depend on how loud you sing, how close you sing to your mic, and will also depend on the mic itself. So keep in mind that dynamic mics are intended to pick up uh, sound uh, directly from in front. So there is kind of a sweet spot, which is where I'm at right now, directly in front of the mic in line with it, and uh, pretty pretty close. So you'll see if I go to the side, it's uh, suddenly going to start getting quite a bit quieter as I'm over here. Same thing as if I go above the mic or to the other side, etc. So there is definitely a uh, sweet spot uh, right in line with the mic and reasonably close. As far as my gain and volume settings, I ended up setting the gain uh, at around 90% on the back and the volume in the menu at 110. So what happens if you have a very soft singing voice and you're finding that the gain is maxed out and the mic volume is maxed out and you're still not loud enough? At that stage, you could look into different mics or you could start lowering the volumes for the keyboard sounds to compensate. Uh, so for example, you could go into the function menu and go navigate until you see M volume. And that's the volume for the main voice. And then you could go in and modify that to be, uh, to be lower. And then that way your uh, mic is going to be louder relative to that. And you could do the same thing for the layered voice, which is D volume, or for the style and rhythms, which is style volume, etc. Note, though, that the volumes for voices and styles uh, are different for each voice and style, and they do not automatically get saved when you turn the keyboard off. So if you do have to resort to doing this, like modifying your main and you know, dual uh, volumes and style volumes, etc., just to accommodate your mic, you are going to need to save those changes in registration memory slots. So I would consider this as a last resort. Uh, and it could be a very time-consuming issue for you and would use up a lot of registration memory slots very quickly. I should mention that when I first tested the mic port on this keyboard with my old 30-year-old dynamic mic, while it did work, I had to have the volume and gain way higher than with this brand new but not expensive dynamic mic that I recently purchased, uh, which I will be doing a review on soon. So the mic itself does matter. Okay, so before we look at the other mic settings you have in the function menu, let's take a quick look at the mic button on the front of the keyboard. It's only uh, one, uh, one button, but this button is awesome. As we've seen, we can hold down shift and uh, press the mic button to access the, uh, the mic setting. So it takes us straight to the mic volume, uh, which saves us having to scroll through the function menu. But when you're not holding down shift, uh, this button quickly toggles the mic uh, between three settings, mic, talk, and off. And those settings are indicated right up here on the menu. So for example, right now it's set to talk, which means that I'm not going to get any effects. If I hit it uh, once from here, that was muted, which is why you couldn't hear me saying it was muted. And then I hit it again, now I'm on mic, and that's why you're hearing uh, my current uh, effects that I have, uh, have chosen. So I'll switch that back to talk before the effects get, uh, get annoying. So to anyone who has uh, performed or gigged before, this is so handy to have because you can talk in between songs without having a bunch of effects on your voice. Or if you have a, you know, a party host coming up to make an announcement or somebody coming to request a song or whatever, it's really nice to be able to just turn off the effects and hand them the mic. And then off will mute the mic entirely. This is a very handy feature because if your mic has no on and off switch, uh, you can disable the mic this way. And even if it does have an on and off switch, you're much better off using the keyboard to, um, uh, button to mute your mic uh, to avoid using the switch on your mic. Because uh, if you flick the switch on your mic, it can send uh, this wonderful sound through your speakers or worse yet, through a PA system. I'm just going to switch my mic off. So you're going to hear that through uh, speakers or a PA, but you're not going to hear anything if you just hit the mute button on your keyboard.
Okay, so now let's look at the other mic features you can set. So if we hold down Shift and press the uh, mic button again to get into the function menu, I'm going to hit Enter to just exit the uh, modifying the mic volume. Then I'm going to sc scroll to the right. So this is the first effect that we can uh, do, which is the uh, mic pan. Now you're, you're going to notice these three lines up here, and that's because uh, the, uh, the effects aren't applied to the uh, mic when it's in talk mode, which is what I'm in right now. So I can hit Enter and nothing's going to happen. I can't modify this. So you're going to have to, unfortunately, listen to me uh, talk with effects for me to uh, demonstrate how these work. So I'm just going to go back to the, uh, the mic setting, which is with effects. Now you can see that if I hit uh, enter to modify the mic pan, now I've got access to it. So C is for center. I could go all the way to the left, or I could go all the way to the right. Or back to center. Then if I hit enter to save that, and then I scroll to the next setting, which is mic reverb, and press enter to modify that, that's going to be a level of uh, 0 to uh, 127. I think the default's in around 50 or so. I've already upped mine a little bit to 65. But I can crank that to 127. Or turn it off entirely. Press enter to save it. Then I can go to chorus. Same thing. Press enter to go in. Uh, once again, I think this is the default 49. I just left it there. But I can modify that. Also up to 127. Or off entirely down to zero. Okay, so once again, as soon as I go back into talk mode, you'll see those three lines show up, which uh, restricts access to any of the effects. Now, if I go back to the volume, because the volume is being used for the talking, I do have access to edit the volume when I'm in talk mode, just not the uh, effects. And if I'm in the mute mode, which I'll show you, I won't be able to talk while I'm doing it because I'll be muted, you'll see I won't even be able to edit the mic volume. Something to note is that these settings, the mic volume, the pan, the reverb, and the chorus, all get saved when you turn off the keyboard, so that's cool. Unfortunately, they do not get saved with registration. So if you had one song where, let's say, you wanted the uh, reverb totally cranked up or something, you would have to set that manually before doing that song and then uh, reset it back to whatever it was before after doing that song. While it would have been cool to have these settings included in saved registrations, uh, no keyboard is perfect, and the fact that you even have the mic talk and mute quick access options to me is super cool. Now, a couple final things to take note of. I was reading in the manual, and it says the uh, mic will be heard out of the piano speakers, and I immediately thought, oh no, what about the left and right line out ports, and will the mic be included in uh, those outputs? And what about recording audio to a flash drive? Is the mic included in that? And what about the audio interface built into the USB port? Will the mic be included in that signal? So I immediately went and tested all of those, and good news, there's nothing to worry about. The mic signal is included in all three. The lineouts, the recordings to the flash drive, and the USB audio interface, which is what I'm actually using right now to record this video. So to me, the impact of that is pretty huge. Uh, if you're using the keyboard to perform with an external amp or connecting to a portable or house PA system, then your mic signal will be included uh, with the keyboard. And you have the added uh, bonus of having uh, control over your mic right at your fingertips. And for people like me using a small portable PA like my Bose S1 Pro, which only has two inputs, this also saves a valuable input on that PA system for somebody else that I might be uh, performing or practicing with. And don't forget, since these keyboards have a 1 8 inch audio input that you can stream audio in from a device like my iPad, then you can also include a backing track in that one audio signal along with your keyboard and vocals and just take up one port on the PA system. And another cool feature on the PSR E473 and the PSR EW425 is that you can record uh, direct high quality audio straight to a flash drive in WAV format. Same as with the line out, puts uh, your vocals and audio uh, in, if you are using it, will be included in that audio signal as well. And you guessed it, the mic and audio in are also included in any audio going out through your USB uh, uh, out cable, uh, thanks to the built-in audio interface. 
This is also a massive feature for me because I can now make a video of me singing and playing along with a backing track uh, from my iPad or taking uh, talking in a review video without needing an external audio interface. Before I got this keyboard, when I made a video playing and singing, I would connect my piano and mic to a mixer, then the output that mixer to an audio interface, then output that audio from the audio interface to my iPhone, which is recording the video. If I was uh, just making a talking review video like I am right now, I could skip the mixer and just plug my mic directly into my audio interface, and then once again, the audio interface into my iPhone. Now I have my mic permanently plugged into my PSR EW425, and all I have to do to make uh, either a singing, performing kind of a video or a talking video like I'm doing right now, all I have to do is connect uh, the USB out from my keyboard direct to my iPhone. No mixer, no audio interface required. This has already started making my life way easier recording videos. And since this keyboard can run on batteries, I could take the keyboard, my mic, my iPad for a backing track, and my iPhone and go record a singing and playing video in a park and get high quality direct audio, including vocals. That's fantastic. So that's the mic feature on the new Yamaha PSR E473 and PSR EW425 keyboards. I have to say Yamaha really hit a home run with these new models. Uh, if you're curious, the mic I bought when uh, I got this keyboard to replace my 30 year old uh, Shure Dynamic mic, I am also super happy with, and I will be doing a review uh, on it in the next few weeks. It's the uh, Samson Q2U uh, Dynamic USB mic. So this mic can be used either as a tra uh, traditional dynamic mic uh, or as a USB mic to plug directly into a device like a PC or an iPad. So I can use this for talking videos, for singing or performing, or for narration videos on a PC or even zo a Zoom call on a device. So it's a great all-purpose uh, mic solution and I'm super happy with it. And it's only about 70 US dollars or so, so the price is right. So I'll leave links below to some other videos on these keyboards that I've made on my channel, as uh, well as some uh, Amazon affiliate links for the keyboards, as well as this Samson mic if you want to check out current prices. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Uh, feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel, and that does really help me out. Thanks again for stopping by, and have an awesome day.